Well, here we are at the AI Summit in New York, and I'm happy to welcome my friend from Blue, Blue Yonder, Tommy C. Hi, welcome for joining us here. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for having me. So tell me a bit about Blue Yonder, just in case people don't know what you guys do. Yeah, Blue Yonder is a uh, leading supply chain platform uh, within the AI ML space. Uh, we design software that helps retailers, manufacturers, logistics companies really optimize that entire end-to-end -end supply chain network. Right, you've got some big uh, backing behind you guys. Yes, yes. Uh, you're referring to the recent uh, acquisition that Panasonic made uh, a few months ago. Uh, so now we are operating independently uh, underneath the uh, Panasonic umbrella. And we're really excited about the acquisition because it's in line to what our moonshot is. Our moonshot is really to create an autonomous supply chain. Uh, and with the acquisition of Panasonic, uh, there's three areas that we're really excited about. One, of course, is artificial intelligence machine learning. The second is cloud computing. And the third is the uh, edge devices. And Panasonic, as a hardware company, we really feel strongly about the, uh, where we can go with uh, our moonshot. Yeah, you mentioned cloud computing. What's the role of cloud in all of this? Yeah, cloud computing is uh, an everyday part of our life now, right? Um, the benefits of cloud com computing is, there's, is tremendous. Uh, when we take a look at, even within the artificial intelligence and machine learning space, there's so much data that needs to be managed and uh, kind of interpreted. Uh, so the benefits of the cloud, one, of course, is sc scalability. And two, when you're uh, analyzing so much data, you need the data as close to you as possible, depending on the use case. Uh, so with edge computing, cloud computing, it really enables all of those uh, workflows to empower the users uh, to accomplish what they want. And uh, when we look at the supply chain, uh, there's a lot of instances to optimize, right? And I know you and I talked a little bit before, there's demand forecasting that we can improve even within the end-to-end -end workflow, so. So what is your role in the organization? Yeah, myself, uh, I am the uh, product marketing director at Blue Yonder. So I have the fun job to really work with our team and take a look at all of the R&D and the roadmap items and uh, bring it to market. So you're in the market a lot. What are you hearing from the customers these days? Yes, um, I think from our customers, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, one is this spike in consumer demand. And a lot of businesses are struggling to meet that demand. And a main reason why is because of all the disruptions that are happening in the supply chain. Uh, one example, back in May, we had the Suez Canal blockage. And uh, uh, for context, the Suez Canal is a, a major route that connects Asia to Europe. Uh, we're talking about over $9 billion worth of goods get, that get transported every day and the blockage stopped everything at a standstill for six days uh, so that had a major impact in in the supply chain and today well, you, you can't turn on the news and not see it about the port congestions uh, take a look at the United States alone the two largest ports is Los Angeles and uh, and Long Beach it makes up 40% of all imported goods that come into the United States and there are major congestions happening there pre pandemic we're talking about taking only several days for a ship to dock because of all of the congestions that are happening, we've seen scenarios where it took over 40 days for a ship to dock. So then you see a trickle down effect throughout the entire supply chain. So companies are really looking at ways to navigate all of these disruptions to ultimately help meet that demand, trying to get the product to, to the customers. So how do they do it end to end? I mean, these days you mentioned the challenges of, of just, just the ports, for example. I mean, that disrupts everything, doesn't it? It, it does. And there's a lot of, uh, the supply chain is complex. So because of the complexity, uh, it's also global, and supply chains increasingly are interconnected. Uh, so when we take a look at the impacts of disruption, supply chain shocks, it's only going to get more and more common. And the uh, one way to navigate all of these disruptions is really you need real-time visibility end-to-end. -end. And we're helping our customers do that with one of our, one of our products called uh, Control Tower. So is it actually predicting things? It is, so the first step is sensing, right? So taking a look at the entire network and sensing, uh, are there any disruptions that might occur? So if it senses a potential hurricane or weather impact, it lets the users know, so maybe you take a different route. When a disruption does happen, now you're uh, reacting to it. So you need to be able to react as quickly as possible and also quantifying the impact of that disruption. Uh, we actually have a really a good um, a story a customer story uh, back in May going back to the Suez Canal situation uh, when the blockage happened one of our customers which is a multinational
international uh, drinks uh, producer. Um, they, w within one hour, were able to identify all of the containers that were impacted by the Suez Canal blockage and also look at the impact. And if you think about if they did not have Louis Ander supporting them with the control tower solution, it probably would have taken days with all of the manual processes to really understand what was impacted and what do I do next. So do the customers, when they see this, they see a prediction, do they believe it? It's, that's the goal. Uh, I think one of the challenges with artificial intelligence and machine learning is really building trust with the user. And uh, a major way where we t uh, approach artificial intelligence and machine learning there is uh, through a glass box approach instead of black box. So depending on what we're working with, so let's take demand forecast, for example. Uh, in order to predict what am I going to sell tomorrow, what am I going to sell next week, um, there's a lot of influencing factors. It's not just historical sales performance. We're also looking at how holidays, they, uh, any special events, are there any promotions running? Uh, so there's a lot of influencing factors that uh, that impact the prediction that we're making. So we provide full visibility into what those major influencing factors are so the user can see and essentially trust the system. So do the predictions continually change because of the supply chain is obviously so large, yeah. uh, where it, something are projected to be this happening in terms of, of, of like product acquisition, but now something else happened, so obviously they said, say forget that. Is now different? <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely a component where it continuously learns, right? And I think that's where the machine learning aspect comes into play. So one thing is, uh, how do we, how do I interpret all of this data, which is very hard for a human, and uh, gain insights from it, and augment the user. Then the other end of the spectrum is now, how do I trust the system enough to automate decision making? And and uh, there's an aspect of um, really build, building that trust where it's continuously learning and allowing, uh, you letting the system really solve those tedious sort of jobs, such as fine tuning the algorithms, analyzing the data. Let the system do that. That way the user can focus on more strategic items and uh, be more productive. So when a company deploys this, do they do one step at a time, one, one step of the supply chain, then another step, then another step, and eventually it gets end to end? Or do they tend to look at, say, let's start end to end. Yeah. No, there's definitely steps and uh, we look at the, those steps as maturity levels as well. Um, so, uh, And there's specific use cases too. So earlier I talked about one use case where you want to improve demand, your demand forecast, right? The more accurate your demand forecast is, the more optimized your supply chain is going to be to react to that demand. Uh, so we have a use case where we're using artificial intelligence and machine learning to really help optimize that demand and those are all the influencing factors I'm talking about. Uh, going back to the Suez Canal disruption of port congestions, this is really end-to-end, -end, but the use case is how do I gain real-time visibility and orchestration? So what we mean by that is real-time visibility of what's happening in the entire network, and then what do I do next? What do I need to orchestrate? Uh, if, if there is a disruption in one port, in one route, uh, what are the alternative steps? So AIML will present that data to you, but then the powerful thing is all the recommendation levers that you can uh, uh, consider that are that's presented by the machine learning and uh, you and those recommendation levers you can weigh uh, business impact and that's a key thing because when we take a look at supply chain action within sort of the entire network for a company you want to know what is that impact to my strategic plans right so every company is going to have revenue targets they're going to have margins that they need to maintain and supply chain decisions impact those high-level strategic options and traditionally it's very challenging for companies to make those short-term decisions with the horizon to also understand what that long-term strategic impact is. And we're helping companies uh, able to accomplish that. So, so for companies P&L, do they actually say now, because of, of this technology, say it's actually not going to be this, it's going to be either this or this, this range? <laughs> well, that's why um, that's why supply chain is in the boardroom now. When we take a look at P&L, uh, a major factor of that is going to be what happens to the supply chain. So the supply chain also officers, supply chain team members are in the boardroom now and they're part of the decision making process. And we understand that short long, short and midterm decisions will impact uh, those uh, KPIs that we're talking about. Are there any companies with a significant supply chain who are not doing this? Are there any companies with a significant, significant supply chain that's not doing this? I think um, companies today, when we talk about using artificial intelligence and machine learning, right? I, I, I don't think they're thinking about about um, uh, 
should we use it? Everyone is thinking about how should we use it? And because the supply chain is so massive, uh, it can be challenging. And that's why uh, the approach Bulliano takes is there's specific use cases where AI ML makes sense. And and uh, working with us, the benefit also is uh, they, the machine learning is also repeatable. It's not a proof of concept. When a proof of con when you launch a proof of concept, a lot of times, okay, we proved that it worked and then it stops. Uh, companies that businesses that are partnering with us, it's a repeatable process. And it's also a scalable process. And uh, we talked a lot about managing disruptions. We talked about how do you improve a demand forecast. The other side we're using AI ML too is how do we optimize pricing for retailers. Uh, so we definitely work with a lot of customers, uh, looking at the areas where we can optimize those workflows and uh, improve uh, business operations. So if we're having the conversation a year from now, we'll be talking about the same thing or something different? I think a year from now we're going to be talking about the same thing. Uh, I, supply chain disruptions are not going away, as I said before. Um, it's a global, complex ecosystem and increasingly interconnected. So uh, in a year from now, companies are still going to need to, how do I manage the disruptions that are happening? What's the impact to my business? And ultimately, the goal right, is getting product to the hands of the consumer. Um, so in a year from now, they're still going to be looking at those initiatives. Uh, and then you know we're, we're at the AI summit. Uh, hopefully, from a year from now, those AI processes are more mature, and uh, they're leveraging those uh, to their benefits. Larger scale. I'll Larger. see you next year. Thank you. Thank you, John.